You got, you know, idiots like Bill Maher, you know, who... Now, you know, now remember, early on, we saw all these attacks on Vice President Kamala Harris, all these stories. Y'all notice you really haven't seen many uh, as of late, right? You haven't seen many as of late. But now, Bill Maher decides to open up his big-ass mouth, and he decides to say, oh, my God, Biden should replace Vice President Kamala Harris because she's such a failure. Um, she's a failure? R really, Bill? Um, I don't think so. And just because you say so. So, so here's this. Th this is the discussion that took place somewhat on his show on Friday night. Listen to this stupidity. Could see is replacing me, Vice President, because... Yeah, she's, she's just not very popular Hasn't anywhere. And <laughs> it didn't seem to work out. And um, I don't know, that's been done before on a ticket, you know? I mean, a lot of people... Tulsi would... Gabbard, remember? That was that moment in the debate where she brought up these... that there are uh, men and women in California that are in prison for these, you know, pot deals. And then she was laughing about getting high on the radio station. And it was just like... Tulsi Gabbard was like this heat-seeking missile. That was the end of it. You know, she's got a lot of, in addition to being, for some reason, um, an off-putting person, she, <laughs> she also has, I think, a lot of baggage that probably wouldn't do well under a lot of scrutiny. I just think she's a bad politician. And I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think, I think she's a very bright person, but mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, just see, but I can see them doing that because a lot of the problem with Biden being old is, oh, if he dies, then, you know, you're mm -hmm. gonna get this person. Okay, so here's the problem with the Democratic Party. They're so boxed in by identity politics that you cannot conceive of a Democratic ticket that doesn't have a woman, person of color on it, and pretty soon you're going to line up behind that gay Latino and you're going to have to have, you know, a, a deaf Eskimo be, uh, <laughs> be the... Uh, but am, I, am I right that they are boxed in by well, I, identity? I, I, well, first of all, I, I, I see it differently in that I don't think Kamala has, has caught fire yet or found her footing. <laughs> I think that's true. I think, I think the, poll, the polling data says that. But uh, I don't think that she would be a weight on the ticket. What I will say is this. You talk about identity politics. Joe Biden is an example of identity politics. Joe Biden is an example of black voters saying, we think we need to put a white guy in there. And nobody says he's an identity politics guy. Uh, Pence. How do you get Pence? You have Trump, who is not the most saintly guy in the world, needs somebody whose identity is conservative Christian. He goes and gets Pence. So politics is about identity. That's what it is. But whenever there's a person of color or a woman, we say, well, that's identity politics. It's all identity politics. You okay. just got to put a, get a ticket that can win. And that's I don't that, know. That I have. All right. So I, I had somebody who came up to me uh, last week at CBC older sister and she said Roland I love I used I love watching your show I used to watch it all the time but you cuss too much see what I just played is the reason why I cuss <laughs> and I told her we don't I said I don't cuss that much I'm trying not to cuss I'm trying but that bullshit is why <laughs> it will make you cuss that that crap right there and <laughs> and, 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 and Van, Van Van was nice to him Van was real nice to him. First of all, the little white woman, I would have, I would have said, what the hell is off-putting? Mm-hmm. I, I would have said, I, I need you to explain to me off-putting. Mm-hmm. Every black woman mm -hmm. who has worked in corporate America in politics and academia has heard that little sit they're off-putting. What do you mean? Off-putting. Then I heard baggage. First of all, she straight lied. It has been totally refuted that lie about mm -hmm. Kamala Harris locking up millions of people because of weed. That lie has been refuted. And a whole bunch of brothers and sisters were running around believing that lie, and it's a lie. It's a flat-out lie. And, and in fact, my man, uh, my man Drew comment, 
uh, uh, Drew, uh, y'all follow him uh, on um, on social media. Um, it was so funny because uh, he, he's done um, he's done um, a, a number of videos. Uh, y'all, let me see if we can get Drew on the phone about this whole weed deal. It's a lie. So sh that woman get, just lied, and Bill Maher said nothing in correcting her. Then he said, bad politician. Do you know who is the most effective person for the White House right now in talking about the Dobbs decision and Roe v. Wade in the political co context? Vice President Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. Do you know who played a significant role in pushing Biden on the student loan debt relief? Vice President Biden, Vice President Harris. Now, did she have a rocky first year? Of course. Of course. But y'all notice all of the Harris's awful stories. Y'all notice how they just disappeared. But see, this is how folk like Bill Maher throw this kind of crap out. But now let me get to the crust of what I want to deal with. Bill Maher said, oh, the Democrats have boxed themselves in by identity politics. This is the favorite phrase of white liberal slash progressive men like Bill Maher. Because these white men don't like the fact that they no longer are plan A Plan B, Plan C, and Plan D. <laughs> Let me say it again. Mm -hmm. White fear ain't just about white conservatives. White fear is also about white liberals, white progressives, because the operative word is white. Do you, do y'all want to know? Who is really afraid of black and Latinos getting numbers increasing? White Democratic strategists who control the purse strings to the billions of dollars because they don't want to see black strategists, black campaign managers, black media analysts, black pollsters because these white Democratic strategists have become multi-millionaires off of these campaigns. It ain't no different. Y'all, don't get confused about what's going on here. So what Bill Maher says here, oh, they're getting boxed in by identity politics, Bill Maher refuses to recognize that whiteness is identity politics. Hey, Bill Maher, since you're scared to invite me back on your show, the only time I got invited was October 2014 and killed, but y'all a little scared to invite a brother back. What are you, what are soccer moms? Mm. Renita, can you just tell me, when we hit the phrase soccer moms, who are they talking about? White women, got and it. that is identity politics. Of Congo. When you hear NASCAR dads, <laughs> who are they talking about? Talking about white men. Julian, when you hear the phrase, the working class, is it actually conjuring up black and Latino <laughs> workers? No, you're talking about the white boy with a lunch bucket. Precisely. Still, Precisely. Where with the majority of working classes. Right. Are. Precisely. I, I, I got it. But the point here, folks, is when you look at politics, they literally segment audiences based upon identity. Do y'all actually think for a second they only do it when it comes to black and Latino folks? And you, you heard Bill Murray, oh, when they were next up, they're gonna be lining up the gay and Latino, uh, uh, I, I forgot the little dismissive comment that he used. Y'all, this is what we're talking about here. Clock. And so you gotta be aware of white so-called Democrats and progressives who themselves, they don't like the fact that we now get to have a voice. 
we now get to have a perspective. Bill Maher is one of those white men. And see, Bill Maher thinks because he slept with a lot of black women and he smoked weed with a lot of black people, he thinks he's a brother. You're not. Bill, you are a white man. You talk like a white man. You live like a white man. And you don't want to accept the reality that this is a world that is no longer being dominated by white men. White men like yourself are threatened by black people, black men, black women, Latinos, Asians. That's a fact. You don't want to own up to that. And what y'all do is, y'all sit here and purposely lie on Vice President Harris, and then the stuck on stupid people who do no research, who listen to disinformation and misinformation, they run with it. Well, uh, and see, this is why y'all get mad. Roland, why you interrupt people? Because when people come on my show and lie, I stop them. They lie. I stop them. Bill Maher should have known with all the weed he smoked that what, he, what she said about Kamala Harris locking up all of these black and brown people because of weed was a lie. But when you're not a real journalist and you're playing a smart media person, you're really a comedian, and there's some smart comedians, you don't have the research at hand, so you can't say, I'm sorry, that's not true. So that woman, and again, j j just so y'all think I'm confused, I I'm going to play what Caitlin said, which is a lie, and I'm going to bring my man Drew in, and I'm going to bring the panel in as well, because y'all need to understand why we do this show. It's because people with, like Bill Maher, with major platforms, when they throw that stuff out there, then folks run with it. And then it spurs stories and blogs and podcasts. And that's how it gets built. Oh, my God, Vice President Kamala Harris is so awful. She's so terrible. She should be replaced in 2024. With who, Bill? A young white guy? Hell, you complain. You complained about gays and Latinos. So Pete Buttigieg, you don't pass, I guess you don't pass Bill Maher's test. Oh, AG Debt Secretary. Uh, but Sarah, uh, get, sorry, you're out. What Bill Maher is essentially saying is, please, white people only apply. So let me just play again. To listen to this, I want you to listen to clearly what is being said here. Could see is replacing me, Vice President, because <laughs> yeah, she's she's just not very popular Hasn't anywhere, <laughs> and it didn't seem to work out. And um, I don't know, that's been done before on a ticket, you know. I mean, a lot well, of people. Tulsi Gabbard, remember that was that moment in the debate where she brought up these that there are uh, men and women in California that are in prison for these, you know, pot deals, and then she was laughing about getting high on the radio station. And it was just like, Tulsi Gabbard was like this heat-seeking missile. That was the end of it. You know, she's got a lot of, in addition to being, for some reason, um, an off-putting person, she, <laughs> she also has, I think, a lot of baggage that probably wouldn't do well under a lot of scrutiny. I just think she's a bad politician. And I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think, I think she's a very bright person, but mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, just see, but I can see them doing that. Because a lot of the problem with Biden being old is, oh, if he dies, then, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to get this person. Okay, so here's the problem with the Democratic Party. They're so boxed in by identity politics that you cannot conceive of a Democratic ticket that doesn't have a woman, person of color on it, and pretty soon you're going to line up behind that gay Latino and mm -hmm. you're going to have to have, you know, a, a deaf Eskimo. <laughs> <laughs> A deaf Eskimo. What that is, is a white man making fun of the fact that you have more than qualified black, Latino, women, and gay candidates. But for Bill Maher, hey, 
only white straight men need apply. That, that's really what he's saying. Uh, Drew, Drew I, I, I called you because you just heard with what that fool Caitlin had to say. Uh, and Bill Maher, did, Bill Maher did not correct her all the... Uh, Drew, can you hear me? He loud and clear. You hear me? Uh, all right. So she sat here and just lied. And, oh, my, how Tulsi Gabbard just blew her away about all of the men and women who Kamala Harris locked up because of weed and pot smoking. Bill Maher didn't correct her. You've done numerous videos completely just, bl just dispelling that lie. Well, yeah, because it's not true. It's pretty easy stuff to look up, too. Um, yeah, the, the moment with, uh, with Tulsi Gabbard, it's easy to be loud and wrong. But in the moment, you know, when people can't fact check in real time and make it seem like you know what you're talking about. But the fact of the matter is everything that she said was an outright lie. It was misinformation, disinformation way before we even had a COVID situation. But um, yeah, Kamala Harris literally is the opposite of what that. She did not lock up a bunch of black people for weed. As a matter of fact, when she became San Francisco DA, over the length of time of her DA reign, um, the admissions for state prison marijuana uh, 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 imprisonment fell 66% over her predecessor. Like, they, the, the last guy locked up 135 people to state prison when marijuana was the most serious charge. Over the same amount of time, Kamala Harris locked up only 45. So that's a drop. Um, even when she became attorney general, same thing. First of all, attorney general don't even prosecute marijuana cases. I said all the time. That'd be like the CEO of Target ring you up on aisle three. That ain't gonna happen. But even then, even during that time, the uh, the actual uh, uh, imprisonment for uh, marijuana fell during her time as AG. So this mythical time that she was locking people up for, for weed, uh, we ain't seen it in real life. But y'all got some good imaginations, though. And I've, I've learned that. Well, and again, uh, uh, you know, when people like this go on national shows and repeat the lie and no one corrects the lie, then somebody watching goes, well, there it is. She was horrible. She was simple. She was a cop. And she was just locking people up and just throwing the key away. And then the black folks ran with it. Oh, she locked up all these brothers. She didn't care about brothers. She didn't care about sisters. Oh, they took one case and said, oh, that, that represented all the cases. And folks were simply lying. And that's what Bill Maher calls baggage. Yeah, baggage. Yeah, that's funny. Now, bag. You know what we call it now. Now you said I'm, I'm knee deep in the in the uh, debunking the misinformation on COVID vaccines game. We call it disinformation, and we call it uh, uh, just very dangerous. To be honest with you, man. Like when 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 something goes out long enough and nobody's there to correct it, it can get gain so much traction. People really start to believe it, and so they don't even know the fact that Kamala Harris is one of the original priority, or pioneers of something called restorative justice with her back on track program in San Francisco to where instead of getting people locked up for something like, I don't know, a little bit of weed or two grams of crack, you know, you give them, uh, give them jobs, you give them uh, uh, employment training, uh, job readiness training, you give them education so they get their GED, um, you help them with their credit, parental training, and so on and so forth, rather than putting them in, in prison cells uh, just because they were trying to sell some drugs so they could make some, do make some money to feed their family. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's the misinformation game definitely is something that um, it, it's dangerous. It's lucrative for the people who know how to capitalize on it, but it definitely is dangerous in the overall perception of public uh, health and, and public policy. All right, Drew. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for jumping on real quick. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, everybody. Get vaccinated, get boosted. We're All done. Right. All right, thanks a bunch. Uh, bringing my panel here, uh, Juliana Makongo, Renita. I mean, this is... I mean, it, it, it really pisses me off. It, it, it pisses me off when... Um, I, I, I watch this stuff. When I listen to this nonsense, and again, I, I've been saying this for years. President meets with black pastors, but when they white, he meets with pastors. Mm -hmm. President meets with Latino leaders. But when it's a room full of white CEOs, he meets with CEOs. Identity politics includes white people. But what Bill Maher chose to do is he chose to weaponize that, and then he sounds exactly like Republicans, Julian, in attacking Democrats and what he is operating with his white male nationalistic view how dare Democrats elevate 
women elevate men. And what's so <laughs> stupid is she literally, th th this is what is so stupid to me. How much of a dumbass Bill Maher? <laughs> One non white president. One in American history. One non male vice president. Any, 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 any women been vice president before? Any? any? I, no. any? <laughs> So she the first female vice president, right? So you got one. Oh Lord, the house is my. We might as well demolish the house. Oh Lord, one woman got in. How dare? Oh Lord, can't call nine one one. That's literally what this fool is saying. Truly on going. Well, you know. That whole segment was objectionable to me for any number of reasons. First of all, that off-putting thing. I'm supposed to be off-putting. I'm, you know, whatever. I can be a little bit much. <laughs> but off-putting, I mean, that's a bit much to say. I mean, it's it's a generic, I'm not comfortable with black women. That's really what's being said. That's I'm all that is. Black women. Then that little, he, I mean, Bill Maher is supposed to be some kind of a, okay, I'm a curse since you don't anymore, half-assed comedian. Uh, he's supposed to be a comedian, but nothing he said was funny. The whole notion of a deaf Eskimo, that's the meaning to differently able people, is the meaning to a minority group in this country, people who represent uh, one of our largest states. I mean, that bit is not funny. It simply is not funny. But he seems to get—he he is pushing all the identity politics buttons with white people. He's a white boy, like you said, slept with enough black women that he thinks that racial identity rubs off. In bed, it does not. But in any... And the whole thing just was objectionable to me. I just sort of sat here seething, <clears throat> saying... How, and I used to like Bill Maher, but that was just some stupid-ass nonsense. Excuse my cursing. The, 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 the thing here on McCongo, um, again, we know who his audience is. And again, when I talk about white fear... How the brown of America's making white folks lose their minds. We've got to stop acting like, oh, it's just those, those white Republicans. No, there are white Democrats, white progressives. Oh, they're in Hollywood. They're in corporate America. They can't stand the fact that they now have to post jobs. They can't stand the fact that in some cases they gonna have some black bosses. And oh, hell no, don't let me have a Latino boss. We are seeing this. Whiteness has always defined America. And what they don't like when one gets in, it's like, damn, the whole world is going to pot. So and if I was on the show, I would say, okay, Bill, since you criticize having a woman and having a black Latino, well, fine. Who are your top three choices? Mm -hmm. He probably would have named three white men, three mm -hmm. white straight men. Go ahead, Omicongo. Well, I, I think you've, you've been talking a lot about, about your, your book tonight, and one of the things that you lay out in, in, in the book is you talk about the fact that there's, there's a, hist a history-long trajectory of white people feeling like, okay, we've done enough for you. And an example you gave in the book was of the Tilden Hayes Compromise. When people saw all of the gains coming out of Reconstruction and going into you know, 1877 when they pulled the federal troops out uh, of the South and that ushered in Jim Crow, a lot of that had to do with the fact that, well, you guys have gotten enough. And we see that now. I think the difference, a lot of us liked, used to like Bill Maher. And so Dr. Malvo was saying, we started to see a difference after Obama got in office. The mindset started to change. You talk about it in your book when you talk about Dr. King going to Chicago and realizing that that was probably one of the most racist cities he's ever been in because people who are, you know, in, in Chicago weren't as progressive as people thought that they were. And so really, at the end of the day, Bill Maher is in line with that. The fact of the matter is, he says that Vice President Harris is not a good politician. Excuse me, she was a senator in a state that's not majority black. So what is, what is he talking about, really, at the end of the day? And the role of the vice president is to put out the agenda of the president. So she's doing exactly what she's supposed to be doing and more, because she's been more vocal vocal in her role than Biden was when he was under Obama, as relates to speaking out heavily about these social justice issues. And she's definitely more vocal than Mike Pence was. So really, at the end of the day, this dude is mad, he's angry, and he's really 
just sees black women in a particular light and is not ready for them to actually have real power and it manifests itself. And Van Jones, you should have challenged him on his points as well. Well, and, 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 and Renee, that particular point that Oma Congo makes there uh, in terms of how often she's been out there, that is the point. One of the reasons people trash her is because she's been more public and more vocal than any previous vice president. And so she has a larger target. Most VPs out of sight, out of mind. Biden was, Pence was, we could mm -hmm. keep going back, Gore was. And so Biden has provided her a much larger platform. I mean, look, Saturday night at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation dinner, she spoke and he spoke. I have attended the CBCF Phoenix Awards dinner for years. Julian, you have as well. I have, I cannot remember ever where the president spoke and his vice president spoke before him. Now, people can say, well, that's because she's a black, uh, black female. Okay, and? But he could have easily said, you the VP, sit down there, you can attend, but I'm speaking. No, he shares the stage. That's a part of this whole deal. But again, folk like Bill Maher, like, like a lot of white men, oh, there they go. They picked that black woman up there. And oh my gosh, she's horrible. We need to replace her. No, it's, it's exactly like you said. And the reality is most people cannot even remember the name of previous vice presidents. You know why? Because all they have done is pretty much been in place in place in case something happens to the president. She has been more active, and that is why people do know her name. But to your point, Bill Maher just makes a case of something that I always he say, which is racism is bipartisan. And people need to realize that there is a segment of white people within the Democratic Party who also have a fear of replacement theory, just like white conservatives mm. do. And they are thinking about replacement theory of black folks becoming the post the strategists, and almost exclusively the candidates. But the DNC can listen to Bill Maher if they want to, but they will be they will be learning some uncomfortable lessons because we have seen ticket after ticket where you put up two white straight men and Democrats lose. So what people like Bill Maher have to realize is that this is a black party. And the reason why I say that is because when you look at who consistently votes for Democrats, it's black women first, and then black men are number two. So if you want to win elections, you have to invest in black voters, you have to have black candidates who will speak to black issues in order to get what is the majority of your base energized and ready to go and ready to vote. And until the Democratic Party does that, we will be losing elections. Man, and damn, for Bill Maher, oh my, it's so sad when people might want to see themselves reflected in political office. But see, mm -hmm. for him, he's upset because he sees what's coming. And that's fewer white men being mm -hmm. in control. That's a fact, Bill, whether you want to accept it or not. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Folks, Black Star Network is here. A real uh, revolutionary right now. Black Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black Owned Media and something like CNN. You can't be Black Owned Media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Thank <laughs> you.